Hello everyone and welcome to week five of my Christmas Tag Tuesday series. I can't believe that it's December already and today I'm going to focus on creating tags using word art and my good friend Julie Carrier is joining in this week as well which is wonderful. What I'm using today are these two sets here, the Silver Bell Scrapbooking and the Home for Christmas Scrapbooking and at the time of me doing this recording both of these sets were still available. Now you can see with the Silver Bells there's actually three pieces of word art here and all of them have thin cuts which is wonderful. I've got one here which you can see I've done on black cardstock with gold embossing powder and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So this is the one that I'm going to use to make on camera for you today and I also have several to show you at the end of the video. So make sure you hang around for some variations on this. The other word art that I've used is this Tis the Season to be Jolly. It is quite a bit bigger than what's depicted on the front here. You can see it's quite a decent size stamp and it looks absolutely beautiful stamped up and heat embossed. I've got a variation of gold embossing, white embossing and also silver embossing that I want to share with you today. And the tags I'm going to be sharing with you today are going to be using some of this acetate. Now this came in several different patterns when Close to My Heart did it and one side is gold and when you peel away the protective sheet the other side is silver. So I have used both sides in all the tags that I'm going to show you today and what I'm going to show you today is a little bit of a twist on a tag. I'm going to show you some gift tags for presents but I'm also going to construct on camera a tag that I'm going to use in a scrapbook layout for my Days of December or December Daily project which is a 6 by 8 project. So I've got a 6 by 8 piece of black cardstock and I've also got this pattern paper here. This is from the current mix-in and I just love the designs on this and the page that I am going to construct on camera today with this tag is going to represent day 31. So I've already done a video on day one and now I'm skipping right through to the end to day 31 and then I'll be filling in the middle bits along the way. Now this piece of paper is cut at five and three quarters by seven three quarters so that I've got a black background here and the tag that I'm going to do is going to be dual purpose. It's going to form a decorative element but it is also going to provide some hidden journaling for me. So I'm just laying this out how it's going to appear on the page and I'm going to be using some three by four well actually they're going to be two and three quarter by two and three quarter photos and they're going to come down the side. So this tag is going to be a little bit over top of the photos and it's also going to be an interactive piece on my page. And the reason why I've chosen these colors is because traditionally we head down to the beach to watch the sunset on the last day of December. So I'm going to have my word art on this actual tag. So let's go ahead and adhere this to the tag. And I'm going to go at about this position here. I'm gonna check this before I actually adhere this down. And I'm only putting my adhesive on the piece that is going to to be adhered to the actual tag. So I can actually put some of this dot roller onto the D and that's going to work quite well. And I'm gonna bring this back in and use it as a guide for my tag because I want this to come across some of these photos. So I'm thinking about here is going to work quite well. It's not going to obstruct the main part of my photos. So I'm going to adhere that down and then I've got another acetate piece that is cut at the same size. So just for your reference, this is at eight and a half by two and a half inches. And I'm going to make this into a double tag. So they're going to sit on top of each other and my journaling is going to go underneath here. So I need to punch my hole. I'm just going to bring in my cutting plate from my cuddle bug. And you might have noticed that the tops of these tags have been corner rounded because I wanted the softer edge as it peaks up from the top of my six by eight page layer. And as always, I'm going to use my Versa mat to help me line this up and I'm going to put my hole into my tag. So I've got that one there and now I'm going to line these two up together and punch the hole in the same place and it fits into where that hole is. So that's all done. I just need to put some a ribbon in the top and I'm going to put this page together and then I'm going to show you how this tag that I've created here is going to become an interactive element onto this page. So I'll be back in just a moment once I've adhered these pieces down. 
So I've got the basis of my page here together and now I've got my tag that I've put together. I've got my base layer here that all my journaling is going to go on. It's going to summarize the end of the year and going down to the beach to watch the sunset. Hopefully the weather will be good. If it's not, I will figure out some other photos to put down here. But we do love going down and taking photos of the sunset and sitting on the beach and enjoying the last day of the year together. Now, the other thing I want to add on to this are the numbers. Numbers. So I'm going to give you a bit of a sneak peek. This is in preview period at the moment for consultants, but it will be available to order on the 1st of January. And I love the numbers from this. And it's and it's actually from a brand new stamp set with thin cuts that's coming out, as I said, on 1st of September. And I'm going to use these numbers, I think, with a mix of other numbers throughout my Days of December album. And it's the Let's Party Scrapbooking. It's got all of these gorgeous things that pertain to birthdays of course because that is what this is designed for and you can see there's all the endings so if you've got a fourth birthday third second first it's all covered and all of these gorgeous things but what I love most about this are the big numbers that come with this so these are two inches high and I think this size is absolutely fabulous for a December daily project especially when I've got a specific area to put it on like this if I have more photos on a page I will use a smaller type die or a stamp but for the most part I'm going to be using this one here and I love how these look so I'm going to adhere that to my tag and I'm just going to use dot roller for this and I've cut these out of gold foil paper and it's not really going to bother me that the adhesive will be seen on the back side of this tag because for the most part it's going to lay flat in my album. It's only when the tag is removed and the journaling read that you will see the adhesive on the back part of this. So this is going to sit over here, but you're not going to see the journaling. I'm going to hide that behind the page. So I get this very cool tag feature that is going to go over top of this area here. And in order for it to sit in the same place, I need to create a channel. So I'm just going to flip this over. Actually, I might move this first mat so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Now you could definitely use foam tape for this, but I don't want too much bulk because I know I'm going to be having very pockets and things throughout this album. So I've taken a quarter inch strip of white daisy. I've laid three of them on top of each other and I'm going to adhere these to the back here so that it forms a bit of a channel for my tag to slide up and down. So then it will stay in place. So I'm going to go fairly up close to the top here and I'm just using my tag as a guide so that I can adhere these down. I want it to be able to slide out fairly easily so I don't want it to be too snug of a fit. So that is going over top and this will sit within the page protector. I've got my slider tag all ready to put in and our six by eight memory protectors are actually side loading. So that means I need to cut a slit in the top here so that I can slide my tag in and out. So what I need to do is line this up with the channel parts here that I've put on the back so I know where to cut my little slit that needs to go at the top here. I'm going to draw on each side of this tag and this is going to be where I need to put the holes. Now it's a little bit tricky because it is all the way up to the top edge here. So I'm just going to slide in my plate and you can see that that is not going to go up to the top of my page protector where I want the holes to go. So what I'm going to do is just very carefully because I normally punch with my hole punch and the smallest piece here I normally punch a small hole each side. I'm just going to use my scalpel here just to create a little circle so I'm just moving that around in a circular motion and then I'm going to do the same thing where this one is here and I don't need to draw a line because I've got the top of the page protector here. So I'm just going to use my scissors to cut along the top area here. It's a little bit fiddly but it's going to be worth it. So I'm just cutting all the way through until I get, I'm going to put the point of my scissors out where this hole is that I've made so I don't go any further 
And before I do anything else, I'm just gonna make sure that this is going to fit through. I might need to make that little slit a little bit wider, but that fits quite easily. So I'm happy with how that looks. And now I'm second guessing this little part decorative piece here. You can see when I turn that over, you can see the red line tape. So what I think I might do is just get rid of that because that's going to catch every time because it is sitting up a little bit. So I'm going to cut that off and not use that piece. So I've got my tag already. I've cut away that little piece at the bottom there and I'm going to just see if this all works out. So let me slide this in. I don't know if I need to add another strip on top of these. I'm going to see if I've got enough here. And then I'm going to slide in this tag. It's going to move. You can see now it's moving a lot freer now that I've taken away that wrapped around piece of acetate. And then my gorgeous tag, my acetate tag here with my piece of word art is going to be a little bit of a feature. I'm not going to add anything underneath here because I want this to be the see-through and interactive element. And then we'll be able to pull out this little tag and read all the information there. I love how that's come together and I'll probably trim this little ribbon down a little bit but that lets people know that they can pull that up and reveal some hidden journaling there. Now I'm going to bring in the other tags that I've created that are gift tags for presents. So how these came about was when I was looking for the acetate that I was going to use I found some pre-cut tags that I had already done from a previous year's tag series. So the first ones I'm going to show you are using this same a December to Remember and I think they look absolutely gorgeous. So you can see I've got a large spot here. I've used these for each of those. These were the tags that I found where I keep my acetate. All I needed to do was do the embossing. So this is gold, silver and I've done white embossing on black. The other side of the tag is silver so you can see I've matched up a silver embossed word art piece here on the silver side and a gold embossed piece on the gold acetate that shows. And then I've just simply run this die cut through and backed it so that you can't see the adhesive at all. And this gives me a spot to write the name of the recipient of the gift. I actually love how this looks with a black word art piece with white embossing as well. These I think are going to look stunning on a gift. These are very simple and quick to do but I did want to create an interactive tag with this a December to remember for this scrapbook layout for the last day of the year and then I thought why not make some gift tags using it at the same time to show you all. Now the next lot I'm going to bring in are using the Tis the Season to be Jolly stamp with Home for Christmas. Christmas. I have done the same thing. I've got some silver embossing here and I've got some gold embossing and these were just little strips that were just left over that I hadn't thrown away and I've just corner rounded the top of them because this is only one and a half inches so I didn't want to try and make a little cut here and make this too narrow at the top. These ones here are two inches wide and they're all six inches long but I think you can see by putting the gold embossed on the gold side and the silver embossed on the silver side that it works quite well. And I've used the stitched fancy brackets which are still available and I'll have everything that I've used linked below that's still available. And that fits this sentiment absolutely beautifully and then creates a gorgeous fun tag that I think will look really cool hanging on a gift. And on the back I have stamped to and from on both of them. And that is from the From Me To You festive collection from last year and I believe Julie has used the other version of these on her gift tags, which is airing today. So this was the more formal type set. She's used the more fun type version on her tags, but there's plenty of real estate here to be able to stamp this large script to and from, which I think goes really well with this type of font on this side. So that's it for week five. I hope you've enjoyed this with a little bit of a twist on how to incorporate a tag onto a scrapbook layout. Any tags that you create, and I do this quite often with tags if I've themed them all for the gifts for the year, I will incorporate that tag onto a scrapbook layout. It's a lot of fun to create tags and they don't have to just go on gifts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you same time next week for week six of Christmas Tag Tuesday. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.